reopening your store after COVID-19. Now we've been doing a series of podcasts and webinars on how to get your store ready, how to do those things. And, and guys, I think that we should start with a little levity. What do you think? <laughs> so, well. so this is in, in London and this is a Emily's Veg Sticks and they're doing a kind of satirical bus. I guess people still take the bus though. This bus stop advertising. Our first ever poster seen by a runner and one pigeon. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Good investment. Go ahead when it's warmer, they said. More people will see it, they said. <laughs> like that happened, right? Hmm, maybe we should have made a TV ad instead. I love these because these are kind of like the old Burmache ads. Behold our new poster. Now we just got to find someone to look at it. It's sad, but it's a sign of the times, right? But we've seen retailers out there doing some pretty cool things. This is a travel agency and we love this. And, and these ideas that we share, you guys should take them and tweak them and make them work for you. So travel leaders are in Minneapolis and they had each person who works in their agency hold up a sign and they put this on Instagram and they had a really good response to it. Because people want to see the people that they are used to seeing when they do business, right? I mean, you. Jason, I'm sure you're, you're tired of just looking at your four walls. Yeah. You see, yeah, you want to see people that you worked with before. Nothing, nothing from you two, Kaiser, you're not saying Bender, you have really just <laughs> seen your face. We've been seeing a lot of the three of us, but yeah, well, we have, we have. You know, these in Zoom meetings, I think everybody's having a lot like of Zoom, Zoom meetings. meetings. Yes. So this is Charm City Run. And they thanked everybody for ordering online and, and in the store, but they did a, a, they did a cool thing. So for every hundred dollars a customer spent through April 15th, they earned $20 to use in store when they reopen their doors. Great idea. Anything that you can do to engage customers before you reopen pulls them closer. Here's our own Audrey. I'm going to say it wrong. Audrey, I screw your name up every time. Dijon. Did I do it? Anyone? Bueller? Anyone? Okay. How are you? So she and Daphne put together kits, creative kits, and they put them out in front of their house and um, people could walk by and pick up a kit and they offered new kits to their kids in their community every week. They did it safely because the question was, what are you doing to keep creative during this time of isolation? I love this putting kits out in your neighborhood if you're a crafter. Isn't that cool? And you know what that's doing really is that's taking them out, uh, not it just in the store, it's taking them out where people are. That will gain a, some attention uh, regardless of where, you know, if you're driving or walking, you're going to see all that. Yeah, that's cool. You know what, the ones that are having more of a challenge getting back into the business, George, I really believe are the ones that have taken this time and, and let it just uh, drench the store of non-activity and that's really dangerous and, and I know we'll talk a lot about that during this afternoon well, there's, conversation. There's no grass growing under Audrey's feet I can right. tell you that for sure. Right. Well you said you know what this morning um, or this afternoon when we did uh, our podcast you know these kits it's just another way to engage the customer safely um, and I told a quick story about um, the church down the street from me that's giving out rosaries in a similar way. Gra go up, grab a bag, leave a donation, and 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 that's yeah. and then go about your business. I like that, and I love this. Here is a retailer who does story time on Instagram. So we're talking to craft retailers here. I, I hope that you're all doing. Facebook lives and you're doing craft demonstrations and and this lady is a gift shop and she sells toys for kids so I think it's cool that they do an Instagram story she reads a story cool right easy to do this is a hair salon that Jason found this morning in Kansas City it's cool isn't it by the way that's really taking off I, I mean I heard it well after we took a break I heard him talking about a place now in Texas that is uh, knocking that off so to speak uh, and moving outside because they can't do inside stuff but you know what 
aggressiveness is the answer here. Uh, Here's they, the thing. Okay. You, you have to follow the science, and we're going to talk about that in a second first. These guys are, Salon Inspire is, is following all of the guidelines for the state of Missouri and all of the guidelines for the town that their salon is in to make this happen. They're practicing social distancing. Well, they kind of are. That picture doesn't look like they are, but at least they have masks on. Well, but, each um, tent has its own station. Yeah. And, and that's distanced. And then everyone is supposed to be wearing a mask, although the, the, the gentleman pictured is, is not wearing a mask. The ones that I found, were they were wearing well, masks. Well, it's kind of hard to trim your beard if you're wearing a mask, <laughs> right? No, they're going to have to figure it out. No, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess once they do the beard, they're trimming it, or, or uh, taking off the mask. I guess that's they, like a restaurant, too. <laughs> they probably thought that was going to be okay, and then they didn't realize they're going to film it for TV. And <laughs> now be everyone's coming, judging them. They'll be coming in to bust them in 20 minutes. Yes. So this is, this is a store that does a Facebook Live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. And we certainly hope that every single retailer listening to this, every single retailer in the industry is doing a Facebook Live. You know, easy to do. go ahead, Rich. No, I, I was just going to say, looking at this and uh, the other day we were discussing the fact that people are coming back uh, and, and they will be coming back into the retail environments now. Uh, when we can really open up the doors and do everything we want to do. I still up in the air, but that being the fact, you know, the biggest mistake that could be made by any retail uh, retailer in business today is looking the way they looked when they locked the doors. And I think the customers are coming back. They want to be refreshed. They want to be renewed. They're out. They can go shopping now or whatever the case. And I think it would be a great idea. And George, we talked about this and, uh, Wanted to put this in because we haven't seen it anywhere, but I would, you know, I would implore retail groups to do it. And that's this, put a sign up, have signs made, slam them everywhere. And it would say something to this extent, Toronto strong and retail ready. And I think that that would really, you know, if you put it on the doors or you put it in the windows or you put it on the street, I don't, I don't really care. You know what this is all about right now? Getting through this is all about taking positive action. And a lot of people are walking around saying, oh, no, what are we going to do? No, take positive action. Flip the store, make it look beautiful, and get people coming in retail ready. I think well, that's part of it. Slogan. So whether your store is closed or whether you're slowly reopening, the floor needs to change. And we're about to go through a whole bunch of must-dos that are required by provid provinces. You guys, I have a really hard time saying provinces. If I say providence, <laughs> forgive me. I can't say magician and musician either, so just forgive me. Anyway, we had to spell check the presentation 16 times before we- I can't we, even uh, say it, I, yeah, but I'm trying. <laughs> so there's all these guidelines that you have to follow, but the one thing that you can't forget, and Rich, this is what you're talking about, the circus, you can't forget to set your sales floor to sell. So you're gonna be running around sanitizing things and hanging signs and worrying about spacing and social distancing but that doesn't give you permission to neglect how your sales floor looks, right? You still yeah. gotta do the circus. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, we've had now three discussions this morning with retailers about what they were doing and how they were doing it. And it's refreshing to hear, not that they were doing it, but the reactions they were getting to people when they looked inside or they first walked inside, George. And that's right. the key. So right. I asked this question, you guys, this morning, because I mean, you have all the answers, but I, I was thinking about, so you talk about the, the circus and how your store needs to be an experience, but at the same time, you know, the CDC guidelines and everything is saying not to linger, not to spend too much time in one place. So how do you effectively do that? Um, you know, give them that presentation with that, well, without, you know, making it an unhealthy environment. Well, it's easy. It's easy. You always have fixtures that are more important than other fixtures. And in your store, you have speed bumps. Those are the first fixtures that a customer sees when he or she walks in the door. And that's usually, if your door is in the center, that's usually dead center. Those fixtures have to be new, hot, happening, cross-merchandised. Um, so that you're selling more than one item and they need to change frequently at least once a week whether you're open or not So you might not be having 
you know, hordes of people in your store and having giant promotions yet. But the circus has to do with my experience when I come in the store, with the, the way the merchandise is, the way I, I interact with salespeople, all of those things. You know what, uh, George, I, I always use this example. You've heard it a million times. But, but I really think that we, we've got to have, it, I call it my Disney effect, to be honest with you. And, and what that means is when, when, a, when you go to Disneyland and you walk through the entryway, it's the first thing you see. You see the castle, and if you stand around and watch everybody, you, you'll hear them say, oh, wow, look at the castle. I mean, how cool is that? That's a very important perception point to Disney. They'll never change that because that sets the pace for the customer. And so when I walk into a front door of a store now and I see something that sets me back, you've just taken a mind position. And that's really important to do. So it's, it can't be what it was. We walked into a store last week and they had all of last year's product in cardboard boxes and they had sale signs on it. And I thought to myself, wow, what a lost opportunity. I mean, that was really crazy to do uh, when they sell beautiful merchandise. So, you know, it Here's is all about creating customer dreams. Here's an exercise to do. Go to the front of your store, walk in about five feet inside the front door, stop and spread your arms out wide. Whatever you see directly in front of you is the castle that Rich is talking about. That's right. the vista. Right. That's the first part of the sales floor to, that a customer sees. And that, I don't care if you're, if you're only open at half capacity, that fixture better be incredible. That's the circus building. Then you look from your right shoulder down to the tip of your right finger and everything that's in that path, that's the second most important selling area in the store. Then from your left shoulder down to the tip of your left finger, that's the third most important selling area in your store. And if customers are only gonna be in there for a short period of time, maybe they can't touch things or try things on yet, but you don't want to miss the opportunity to thrill them when they come in. Here's the thing. This isn't our new normal. It's what we're calling the now normal. And that's because things change every single day. And so we're learning to pivot now. We're going to keep pivoting probably until deep into 2021, if not further. Things are going to still continue to change every day. And we're having mandates thrown at us every day about how we can do business, how we can change, uh, or how we must change certain things in our stores. Let's talk about those. So the first thing that we want you to be aware of is that you have to check for current province, county, or community guidelines. I don't know if you guys have counties, but you have communities. So what are you being told by your province that you have to do? Remember, this is the science of it, the thing that's going to keep us all safe. What are the things that you're told that you're being have to do, that you have to do by your province and by your community? And you need to follow those to the letter. And I think, Jason, you said the other day that you really need to have, you really need to assign somebody to do this to keep up with it. Yeah. I mean, if there's going to be, uh, I mean, first of all, keeping track of all the guidelines and everything. I mean, that's, that's the most important because like you said, this is the now normal. So the now normal is everything is changing tomorrow. Right. Um, and the last time we checked into this, I believe each province is, is acting accordingly to their own guidelines. So uh, that's similar to, uh, to what we're working with in the states where each state is responsible. So um, it's just keeping up with those. And I think even since the last time we spoke about what those guidelines were, they changed. So yeah. some, some require masks masks and gloves some require no mask uh just gloves or i mean i i can't keep track of them all so is there a place that we could find this you know i'm glad you asked that you, you <laughs> it's almost jason, like we rehearsed jason is jason is like a uh he's like a, a guidelines covid19 guidelines savant the guy <laughs> is up on is that everything. a good thing you are that's a good thing you know you if i want to know something i just text you instead of looking online you're better than google retailcouncil.org this is the retail council of canada and they have a really nice coronavirus covid-19 resource for retailers page now afci does too right yes creativeindustries.org we have at the top of the page um, our covid-19 resource center and that is being updated as frequently as we possibly can um, we have our podcast that we're doing the inspired talks and we have a newsletter that goes out each week. Perfect. 
So if but, you know all these, if you know all these rules, these mandates, regulations, what do you have to do, and why do you have to? You have got to be the managers of the stores, the owners of the stores have got to be literally experts because the people, the most important people in your store, are going to be coming in, and that's the people that work with your customers. And those people need to be on beam about who's coming back and who isn't. You need to know that and, and schedule training before you even open your doors and what do you say i mean uh, down here in the states we have a mandate that you have to wear uh, a mask and some people walk to, into stores they don't want to wear a mask and they're not wearing a mask and and what do you tell an, an associate to tell that customer well how do you deal with that certainly it's the law it's got to happen or they have to get out of there i guess but well, there's got to be nice ways you can tell them that and that's critically important because there are people who don't think who, who are, are determined to go into stores who don't think that these things apply to them. So you need to prepare your people as to what has to happen when a customer comes in, what happens if you know if they give you a hard time, what's their what's their path, what do they do? And also how you're saying it, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. a right way and a wrong. I mean, I, I want to read real quick. I read this during our podcast, but I think it's, uh, it's worthwhile reading again. It's um, a pool company near me and they posted this on their door and they also put it online and catch what's wrong with it. <laughs> company, I'm not going to say what it's named, is designated as an essential service. We're here to be of service to whatever you may need. We're currently in a state of emergency though, and every customer who walks through our door puts us all at risk. We ask only 10 people in our store at a given time. While we want you to have an enjoyable visit, we can't have you browsing around. Come in with a sense of purpose, get what you need, and get yourselves home. Get out! <laughs> it's a little strongly worded. Well, it is Jersey. No, but still, that is true. <laughs> my home state, but but still, you, you have to be nice about it. But, we also got to be prepared for people who maybe aren't going to be so nice in return. So the other thing, after you've determined who's coming back, you need to have training sessions with your people before you open your doors. And I don't know if that's in person or if you do that via Zoom or on the telephone, but people need to be up to speed. Yeah. You know, let me tell you one thing is that we have to got to be really cognizant about if we're mandated to wear masks, you know, the freakiest thing that happened when you walk in wearing a mask is you don't know if somebody is smiling at you or frowning at you. I mean, it is a blank environment. So voice inflection, I was telling a, I, telling a store owner this, he's getting ready to do his kind of like meetings with his people to get them tuned in. And I said, whatever you do, tell people to speak up and smile when they're speaking, even though you can't see that smile. Because what happens is customers will get an idea that nobody cares. I mean, really, it's a, it's kind of a freaky thing, but, and, and probably shouldn't be talked about to the weight that I put on it, but I do think it's an important thing that people know. And, uh, and so you're right, George, it's, it's, it's about making sure everybody knows what you need to do. And you gotta do what Naomi Campbell said on America's Next Top Model, you need to smize. Well, I, when you I'd, like smile. To, I'd like to be able to write on the on the face mask, write a little thing that says, I'm smiling. Just Are you? Or I wish you could see my smile. I'd like to see that, but you know, I, I suppose there's a reason why we can't, and that's okay. Okay, but. so Naomi Campbell says that there's a way to smile so it shows up in your eyes, and there is. Well, I think that works. It does work. Okay. And number four, health and safety reasons, always really important. It's your job as a retailer to provide the people who work for you with the equipment needed to do their jobs. Now that's masks, gloves, hand sanitizers, wipes, whatever it is that you're required to do by your government mandate, you need to, to make sure that they have access to those things. Now here, here in the States, we've heard of retailers who, who if they have a hard time finding hand sanitizers and things in grocery stores, they're going to um, hotel and restaurant supply houses to try and find those things. But you don't get a choice because it's government mandated. This folks is our new normal, six feet apart and wearing a mask. So Rich, those masks would look good 
if they're saying I'm smiling or even a button. I'm smiling. Can you tell? Uh, I, you know, I know. I, I, I think that it's just a nice touch. I got to tell you something else about masks. There are people that are coming into stores. They refuse to wear them. Literally, they're refusing to wear. I don't want to wear the mask. It's hot. I don't wear a mask. No mask, no service. That sign should burn right now. Get rid of it. That is about the most negative way you can do it. Here, I would change it to this. The safety and health of our customers are very important to us. That's why we're proud to assure everyone that all people will be wearing their mask. And you know, what that does is it, tell, it makes me feel a lot better. This is the one we found at Costco. All members and employees must wear face coverings. Members without face covering, you know, you're not going to be a member. This That's is what from Walgreens for everyone's protection in compliance with government mandate, mandatory face protection is required to enter. Yeah, and you know, see what I'm saying is this make it easy for a customer who doesn't even want to wear a mask to say, I understand. And you know what? I don't want to get sick either. So, okay, it's cool for me. I'll wear your mask. And, and a lot of retailers of, are handing them out. Yeah. That's another way to do it. Right. A lot of retailers are handing them out. But you know what, sometimes when you punch a person in the nose and say, this is what you're gonna do if you come in my store, you're making a bad move. That's not a, that's not a good PR move, right? But if, you, if it's a gentle, hey, this is really important to all of us. And you gotta, we're important you, too, uh, let you them gotta, know. You gotta punch them in the nose politely. Cause you gotta get your point across. You're wearing a mask or you're not coming in. <laughs> If there is such a thing, well, there is. I've had not, it before, I guess I do. Not wearing a mask, you're not coming in, and I'm not going to write it in 47 paragraphs. So this right. is a pretty good one. So what are we talking about? This is crazy, but this is new normal, isn't it, George? It is. No, yeah. it's the now normal. Now normal. Now, now normal. Homemade masks, scarves, and bananas. Possible 1,000 fine for not wearing a face covering. So this guy. <laughs> decided he would literally comply. right yeah. he's compliant yeah now it's good it's to not have covering his nose head. though he's well he's got to go over the nose I think he's got to smell so the one thing that, that's critically important when you're getting all the guidelines from your province and your community is the fact that you got to create a plan and it needs to be written down because you're showing your customers and your associates that you're caring for their safety. If you don't, if it's not written, it's a, we used to say that with goals, if it's not written, it's just a dream. But if you write it down, it can become reality. But you may be asked to show your written plan of how you're going to protect people to people who walk in your store, they're going to want to see it. Well, you know what? There are a vast majority of people, Georgia, know they want to be safe. They do not want to mess around with any type of a chance that I could, I could get sick or my children could get sick. So I, I think the mandate is that the, the bar is pretty high now and the expectation is on that bar so that anybody comes in the stores, they're looking for somebody that's going to care for me. It's just not a it's just not a transaction and give me your, you know, give me your money and see you later. They really want a relationship and that's what every retail right. operator should want as well. That they want to be known as, you know what, we do love you. You're, our, you're you know, our, our customers are important to us. You know, and, and we're, it depends on different parts of the world or different parts of your country. Here in the, in the States, Jason is right next to New York City. So... I'm going to guess, Jason, to you, that written plan is way more important to somebody who's out in the middle of nowhere, population 300. Yeah, but it's getting better here. It's the other places that I would worry about now. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and that's not to like fear monger. It's just, you know, that's the reality of the situation here. At least it's starting to get better. And by the way, getting better here is less than a thousand cases a day. Um, so it's, it's, it, it, when it's bad, it's bad. Um, there was a poll that we talked about on our podcast earlier um, that kind of touched on people's feeling safe, uh, you know, their, their impressions of safety, I guess. And 65% of women don't feel safe trying on clothes. So this was an, an apparel uh, study based on the fact that Simon uh, Property Group is saying that 50% of their retail stores are opening and um, they kind of polled their, their regular crowds. 
that's pretty scary when almost, you know, when 65% of who's coming in is afraid. Yeah. So I think having that written policy, anything that you could do to make people feel like you're taking their safety um, into account Seriously. is important. Yeah. And so is this. And we're not playing around. And by we, I mean governor, governments and, and regulations. Enforcing social distancing is important. Um, it's mandatory. And I don't know if that means in your store that you're allowed to have half capacity in your store at any given time, or you can have five people for every thousand square feet. Your province will let you know what you have to do for that. But, you know, you're used to just running a store, and now all of a sudden you have to be the social distancing police. You know, you know what, when, when, I, when I realized that we were going to mandate six feet and, you know, the, the little squares on the floor, you can't get any closer, um, and the traffic congestion plan of uh, this aisle goes one direction and this aisle comes back, you know, like a, like a Z store layout. Um, I, I wanted to have, have a little bit of fun. The first day that they instituted that in a huge grocery store, I walked down there. <laughs> I had a hoot. I mean, people were crashing into each other. And if you went down an aisle the wrong way, because they were all one way, you kind of seen the faces of people looking at, you know, like, get in your car and drive it, for goodness sake. What are you doing here? But why would you do that? Why would you do what? Why would you walk the wrong way down an aisle? People don't think about it. You know, you a said woman. You did it. No, no, I said, I, I watched you it. You did it for a. No, 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 no George, you are not listening. I watched it. I wanted to see what happens because you're so programmed. If you start the wrong way, you, George Ann, are so programmed to shop in that, that Z method. You go up and then you come back. I knew it was going to be a traffic nightmare the first day. That's why I went in and looked. But now people do it. People. I'm pretty good at it. Yeah, I know you do. I, I did find myself backing down aisles <laughs> If there was no one there, some people get mad, right? Some people get something I wanted was close by. This yeah. is Walmart example of the sticker they have. This is a picture from Target. For the safety of our guests and team, please do not touch or sit on any displays or try on any merchandise. We apologize for the inconvenience. So I asked what that meant. Does that mean I can't touch anything? Yes. No, they have they have mannequin displays and table displays, and they don't want people sitting on them or touching the the actual mannequin displays. There's a lot of signs in stores that are required to explain to me how I need to behave while I'm there and they're mandated. So you have to socially distance from the mannequin. <laughs> yeah. Here's Costco. We are social, following social distancing. Please stay six feet away. I love that. Did you see on our, um, on our Facebook page, we always put on, it's Kaiser, Kaiser ampersand vendor. We always put up stupid signs that we found. So, we found this fake Costco account where this actual woman was losing her mind about the fact that she didn't want to wear a mask in the store. And so she, you can see it on her page, she writes this whole thing about, I'm not wearing a mask in the store and don't ask me to do that. And I'm not social distancing. And the Costco account came back and said, wow, Sharon, we're really looking forward to the documentary about your life when this is all over. Oh. <laughs> and then, some other guy came on and he's losing his mind about his rights about wearing a mask and he doesn't have to do it and he wants a refund and the response from the, the fake Costco account said we're not giving you your money back <laughs> it's just it's it's becoming things that we laugh at but things we have to pay attention to anyway so you can get decals or you can make your own with tape on the floor to establish proper distancing. Here in most of the states, it's six feet apart. I'm gonna guess it in Canada, it's pretty much the same. Here's some examples. Please help by keeping six feet away. Thank you for practicing social distancing. And you, um, know, and you know what, people have adapted to that really well. And from my observation, and I mean, I bet I've looked at 150 locations in the last- 150 locations? Yeah. Well, I count every store in the center. Of the location. Okay. Uh, I, and I, everybody is, is, you know, they're getting along with this one. They're not, they're not complaining at all. Not at but, all. But we're not complaining, but I, I think we have an issue where we don't, 
we're so, like you just said, Rich, about going up and down the aisle zigzag. I think we don't think about it. You know, we're, we're trying to social distance, but there's also, you know, I found myself doing this in the grocery store. I don't, I'm not conscious of the fact the entire time I'm there that I can't get close to people. And so I might pass my cart too close or, you know, lean over to pick up tomatoes while somebody else is doing the same thing. And it's a, it's a whole yeah. new mindset and the onus falls on the retailer to make sure that it happens. Yeah, I agree. I mean, even here where we've been hit so hard, people still don't social distance unless they're like <laughs> reminded of it. And right. where there's lines um, to get into a store or whether it's, you know, checking out or you, if those decals aren't there, people don't really know how far to go. Am I too close? Some people just don't care and get on top of you. Again, this yeah. is New Jersey. I think, that, um, I think there's a learning curve, Jason, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, of awareness and and you know really people aren't looking at that because they don't never had that before right that's like a like a traffic sign that makes no sense to me the first week i'm driving yeah. but then all of a sudden i pick it up the smartest people though are taking it when there's lines of people coming in the smartest merchants are standing a person out in front and they're the usher that says hi now three people can come in and and i'm telling you that that is probably the fastest exercise of education to tell the customers that's what this is really all about i mean i got busted because i was standing one foot in front of the marker behind the guy in front of me and the guy came back from the store and said you're gonna have to stand here and i thought well <laughs> this is really getting detailed but I, i'm okay with it but you know what i saw like i saw two nights two nights ago i went to a huge discount store long line and they took a, I think it was an associate, was playing, they have a guard at the end of the line to let you in, you know, four people in now or whatever. But the, but the other guy was playing the guitar and he would welcome people and he talked to people. And I thought, my God, everybody was having a ball with this guy. So they took what was, could be perceived as a pain in the rear end and they made it at least a fun experience listening to that guy sing his songs. Ah, There's your right. Disney moment. Yes, it sure was, you know, and I, you know, in fact, when it got to be my turn to go in, I let a couple more people go in because I wanted to hear this guy finish the rest of his song. <laughs> but, hey, I was having a good time and everybody else was laughing with him because he was, he was funny. You know, he was like a comedian singing. So well, I, I'm not saying that all the people listening to this and anybody else that we talk to has got to get a guitar player out there. Here's what I am saying. Be customer centric. That's what I am saying. That's what's important. So customers having a little bit of hard time with this social distancing thing, but apparently in this picture, a pigeon is not. Pigeon understands it. The guy in the red t-shirt can't figure it out. <laughs> this is at a doctor's office that I visited the other day. And it's all every other chair. Apparently though, when you're back to back, you know, the social distancing doesn't matter. In, in uh, fitting rooms, we talked about this this morning on our, our podcast about how apparel retailers are dealing with fitting rooms and how they're having to close every other one to make sure that you're social distancing. Some stores allow you to try things on, some stores don't. Again, it depends on the, the government sanction for that, particular, for that particular state and community. Um, some places are letting you return items, some aren't. So. It's a conundrum until we figure it out. Best Buy. So Rich, you talked about this earlier on our podcast. So what happens is when you go to Best Buy, you either make an appointment or you go and you stand out in front and then they assign a dedicated employee to you. They call it a concierge. And that person remains with you the entire time you're in the store, but you're socially distanced, so you're six feet apart. And if you want to try a product, he picks it up wipes it down with a sanitizing wipe, lets you try it, you hand it back to the employee, they wipe it down again, then they put it back on the counter. Which brings me to, if you have end features and speed bumps that people are touching the merchandise a lot, you need to sanitize that product frequently. Then the employee takes you to the register and later they escort you right out the door. <laughs> so it's a lot of customer service. 
Well, you know, it is. Um, you, and you're right, you have to have the appointment to be made. You can't just drive in and say, I want to go buy a television, believe it or right. not. Uh, I, I suppose if there's nobody in a store, you could probably get hooked up with somebody and, and buy the television. But it was pretty slick before they even did that. I think Best Buy's got, they've got their game together, let me tell you. Uh, before they did that where you could walk in the store because they, they, they weren't allowed to have you in the store. They, when you pulled in those parking lots, someone would come out and meet you and say, can I help you? And you'd tell them what you're looking for, what you need. And then they had parking spaces numbered. And they'd say, if you pull up and stop at the number five sign, I'll have someone uh, be with you. What is your telephone number? And honestly, I gave my telephone number, my cell number to the guy, and it wasn't a minute and a half. And I was talking to a person that worked in that department uh, about everything about the things I was I was looking for. And they brought it out. And I gave the guy my credit card, and he went in and scanned it. And I was in and out faster than I could be in and out on my feet. Uh, so I, I would say watch them because they seem to be, you know, heads and shoulders over a lot of people. Yeah, they've, they've always had good service. A lot different from that pool retailer. It's also a great way, you know, not only is it great customer service in a hard time to have great customer service because you're trying to get people in and out, but they're also keeping their employees employed. Yeah, which is good. Oh, they are. Yes, they are. You know, a, a, lot of, a lot of retailers have kind of bristled at the fact that they have beautiful stores and they don't want to put plexiglass up at the checkout counter. This was taken out of Walgreens store. It's a plexiglass piece. It's a suction cup on the counter. We worked with a company this week called Visual City, and they put together a social distancing COVID-19 safety kit. It's got floor decals, easel back signs, a hygiene screen, face shields. You can customize, you know, all the different piece, all the different pieces. And I asked them to put up a, a mock quote now this doesn't include shipping because that's determined by location or sales tax but if you look your florida cows are 19 bucks a piece the easel back signs are 17 face shields are six and a half the sneeze guard for the counter is 76 dollars so you can equip your store pretty nicely and not spend a lot of money nobody's taking cash jason yeah we talked about this earlier too and it's funny, I was, uh, Mother's Day was this past weekend, um, and uh, I went and picked up food, and the person in front of me, there's a, it's a, everybody was kept outside, there was a table uh, in, in between French doors, and they were just calling out your name and handing you the food, and then you went on your way, you had to prepay, and a guy tried to hand a, a tip, cash, through the door to the person, they wouldn't accept it. I think that's the first time in my life I've ever seen a retailer not accept cash. <laughs> Man, I would have liced all that baby, put it in my pocket. <laughs> Signing, you know, this, this whole thing about what you accept and what you don't accept and what's applicable and what's not. And, and you'd think that it's, it makes no sense to have to remind your associates and your shoppers to frequently wash their hands and practice social distancing, but that's the world we live in right now. We talked about this a little bit earlier. You need to give people access to cleaning wipes and sanitizers, and you need to have them throughout the store. And clean the bathroom. Right. And I, that's a job, right? Sanitize the bathroom after each use. Yeah. And I just want to, like, this is a great time to remind everybody that, uh, you know, AFCI, one of our um, new partners, Savings for Members, um, there is a benefit through Savings for Members called Unifirst. And uh, we have information on the website. It's uni, U-N-I first, F-I-R-S-T, all one word together. And they're known for uniforms, um, but they also provide facility services. And what that means is that they will visit your business, pick up soiled floor mats, mops, wiping products, and refl uh, rep uh, replace them with fresh, hygienically clean ones. They'll also restock restroom supplies, meaning hand soaps, sanitizers, paper towels, sanitary tissue, and air fresheners. Wow. And all, all that's through the Universe Benefit. Uh, okay, as an did AFCI you say member. sanitizing tools? Uh, sanitizing wipes 
what else did I say? Sanitizer, okay. hand sanitizer. And that's available. That's through, there you go. That's where you get it. Yeah. And that's uh, available to our Canadian members uh, through the Savings for Members program. S4M.com. You know, I know a guy who is going to love that program. And he'll probably be a huge lobby for his boss in the store to get it. Because I was in the store and uh, this is before this happened, before the, you know, the virus struck. But anyway, the boss said, you know what, the bathrooms, I've been getting complaints about the bathroom. So what we're going to do is we're going to share the bathroom duties. Each person gets a week and you're going to have to keep the bathroom clean. And so they did. And I happened to be in the store and the guy's telling me the story about it, the manager. And he said, and then Johnny, Johnny cleaned the bathrooms. It became his week. And everybody, was, they could not believe it. They said that kid must have been in the service and spit shined the bathrooms because everything in those bathrooms were perfect every day, every hour we would check it. And perfect. And so we had a store meeting and he said, I called Johnny up and I said, Johnny, you have done the very best job anybody's ever done in the bathroom of keeping it clean. And Johnny, you know, pumps it, fist in the air like, you know, the hero he is. And all the other employees are <laughs> applauding. And then the store manager looked at him and said, in fact, you've done such a good job. We're going to keep you on as that's one of your permanent uh, assignments in the store. This kid's going to be happy to sell that program to his manager to get that program from AFCI. I, trust me. I will never forget that. ASCI is really uh, killing it on the membership benefits right now. So <laughs> sign up for that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Again, limit the number of shoppers as indicated by your community guidelines. The word state in there again. Um, but you need to add reminder signs throughout the store. And those reminder signs, you know, you can make yourself um, maybe the, the Canadian website that we showed earlier, the retail um, site can help you with that. But you can also go to our Retail Adventures blog, a grocery store here in the States called Co uh, Kroger Grocery Stores has put together what they call their blueprint for businesses. And it's a 17 page booklet that talks about all the things that they have researched and the things that they have found in their stores that work and work well. Um, and you can even, the signs that they show on there, you can even click on another link on our blog and you can download each one of these signs. And they're all generic and they're all professionally written and they come Lovely. in different sizes. And so instead of reinventing the wheel or making your own, you can just print these signs right on your own computer. When it comes time to open, have a soft opening before you announce that you're back in business. That'll let you, this'll let you test new procedures, make sure that you're ready to be open. You know, one of the retailers that we spoke with this morning is very hesitant to open because the state in the United States that they live in is all over the place. Each county has its own rules and they're just really not comfortable doing it. So we suggested that they put together a list of when they want to open their business hours, you know, when they, the things that they need to know, the things that they need to tell their employees, and then create a soft opening. And then when they're ready, host a grand reopening and just have Rich's Circus, make it big. Oh, you do. You got to come out, you got to come out with a splash, George. You know what I mean? You've got to have balloons. Like one store that we went in, you know, they had, they had uh, marked on merchandise that they took and what they did is they said, you know, we're gonna have categories. So if you saw helium balloons that were red, that, that merchandise take another 25% off. If the blue one, it was like 15%, if it was a gray one or whatever, that was 10% or you know what, but they created an environment of excitement and it drew customers in. But here's the important point. When the customers came in, they saw all the new product and the new displays we talked about earlier, they, they had to walk through it. So in other words, they got, the, they got through the beautiful areas of all the wonderful stuff. And then they had the sale areas in the back where they would pull the customers through as well. Yeah. Tremendous success on moving merchandise. Tremendous. So let's talk about tremendous success in store and out, Jason you wanted to make sure that we talk about not backing off of selling online. Yeah, I mean, we, we spent a lot of time um, 
pivoting, right? Are the word of 2020 pivoting to online. A lot of stores were not necessarily prepared. Uh, they were saying they were going to get to it. And then this hit and, you know, the ones who weren't prepared online to handle business, um, you know, it's been, it's been tough. And so now we've, we spent a number of weeks, um, uh, two months, uh, trying to get our online stores up and running and, and healthy and, and starting to move product online. Don't forget about it. Yeah. Because if this is a, a point that's become profitable, um, you know, as you guys like to say, you have two stores. Exactly. And you're going to have two stores for a very long time. And if you're not selling yet on social media, or if you're not selling through your website, you know, there are companies out there like Shopify and big commerce that will allow you to, it will allow you to sell online quickly. And what are you eating, Kaiser? <laughs> I think you forgot we're on video this time. You're on video, Kaiser. <laughs> <laughs> just sit just there. A, well, before we little piece of cake. send all your complaints to Rich at KaiserInventor.com. <laughs> before we go on past that point, though, because on um, it's not just online either. Um, a lot of stores have moved to like curbside delivery and right. um, not maybe not next day shipping, but but shipping that might not have been shipping. Do you guys suggest continuing to do those things if they've Absolutely. been effective? At, 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 like, like you just said a couple seconds ago, and then we'll, after I finish this, we'll take questions. Um, here's the thing. You are going to have two stores for a very long time. And if you're not selling online yet, you need to get to selling online. As I said, Shopify or Big Commerce or one of those companies. But you need to start selling online now because there are some retailers we know whose stores are closed and they're actually making more money selling through social media and their website than they are when the store is open. So it's yeah. going to be that way for a very long time. Don't Earth stop those Facebook here. lives. No, no, no. Don't stop those Facebook live. And uh, my gosh, you know what? Get a person who's really got the, the gift of gab, you know, fun, can laugh on a video. Uh, and that person should be a point person for Facebook Live because they will become the face of the store to a lot of people if you do this on a continual basis. So it should be probably the owner or the manager for sure. But I, I would say the owner of the store only because you're not going to leave. And uh, and you know what? I, 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 and I feel really good. I, I just got the, the the cut of the comment someone said rich you kept it real when i took a bite out of the sandwich <laughs> thank you thank you thank you i was starving to death we've been on this we've been on I all guess, right since like nine o'clock this morning let's uh let's take the questions peter looks like we have 25. Uh, so i have just unmuted or uh, given everyone the option to unmute their own microphones so you can I'm now gonna, uh, i'm going to stop sharing for a moment here yeah maybe okay. we could all everybody could turn on their cameras this is a a safe environment as we like to say it's uh it's always friendlier since we're all on zoom so you can unmute and turn on your camera if you're comfortable with it I think we all know each other. <laughs> no worries, Monica. So, questions. Where's Audrey? <laughs> Where are you seeing them? I'm, I'm not seeing. Oh, hi. <laughs> Where am I seeing? I want to know what Rich was eating. <laughs> yeah, what do you eat, Kaiser? Uh, it was a shrimp sandwich i made oh. you made it cajun shrimp i made a cajun shrimp you made oh, it. i got some land to chef par excellence <laughs> i can cook can i george no oh <laughs> diana made it okay questions hey george ann and rich quick question one of the things that frequently gets put in a corner is that product from last year how do you help people sell that old product they've got now and is it is this an is this an opportunity to sell some of that product boy yeah. is it one it is it is a perfect opportunity uh we're going to drive traffic we know that if we did nothing and open the door we're going to drive some traffic people want to go shopping but this morning we talked a long time about uh you know kind of distressed merchandise and uh 
I was telling a story about how I found a bunch of boxes in a store and they told me they're keeping it for sidewalk sale. And, and you know, here's the thing, and I just want you retailers to think about this. If you apply what a lot of accountants will say, it costs you 1% to carry inventory every month. So in other words, if you've got an item that costs you $10, you can figure that that's another 1% you've lost by keeping it in the back room. Now that we've got traffic coming in, mandate order would be get it out on the floor, but not out in the front of the store where, you know, that's the showcase, but in an area of the store that really would facilitate you being able to, mer to mark down merchandise and, and take a cut, but take the sale. And I think if it wasn't on this call, maybe it was the last one. I talked about different color balloons. George, did I, when did I do you that? just talked about it five minutes ago. I did. <laughs> That was a good sandwich, man. My mind was on the sandwich. You know I think that's bad shrimp. But, but I am really glad you brought that issue up because there is not, uh, I'm 95% uh, of the stores that I visit, I can, uh, they, when I look at them, I'll say, show me your back room and everybody cringes because yeah. they know me and they know I'm going to raise a little cane about it because you know what, if it didn't sell then, it's not going to go, it's, hey, merchandise is not like wine. It doesn't get better with time, right? So Let's go ahead and get our money and reinvest it in new merchandise that customers can get excited over. We, we and that's what you kept saying, right, um, this morning. Don't don't just sit don't on the away. old uh, merchandise. Get and it out. We just and you could do it online a, now. We just spoke with a retailer this morning who's in the creative industry. He's not a member of AFCI, but in a, in a sister industry. And she put all of her things from like Easter and, you know, spring merchandise has put it all away for next year. And we said to her, how are sales doing? She goes, my sales are horrible. So why are you putting, you just put your cash flow away for a year. And when you pull it out, it's going to look shop worn. People are going to know, especially if, if you're selling paper goods and things like that, people are going to know it's old stuff. So you're better off marking it down, having a special sale, putting together a bundling kit, something rather than saving it. Old Navy, this morning announced that they're donating $30 million worth of past season goods to ki to needy kids. Yeah. They'll take the tax write off. Yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes you hold it so long that you're, it's an advantage to take the tax write off, you know, for the, for a small merchant. No, don't. So you mean like that retail store that we, that we did and we found jeans in there from 1973. Yeah. Yeah. That's and an it was, honest story. It was two years That's ago. An honest story, 1973. Yeah. Dude. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a little bit like the, the kits that I do that you had up there. You know, yeah. that's something that I'm just doing in my community here. So I was benefiting the children of the community, the parents of the community. But because I'm posting it as an idea to people, it's just like, it's like advertising like, cause I can't sell anything right now cause I do events, but it's like advertising my company, advertising what I do and advertising who I am. I think that's what people are looking for right now as well. And it shows that you're a good, you're a good corporate citizen. Yeah. You know, that you're, that you're, you know, you stand really tall when you constantly communicate and in tough times, and in tough times, and, and certainly we've all going to have challenges in our times. I mean, every one of us have. Um, in tough times, what you've got to be is you've got to, you, your light's got to sparkle a lot brighter than anybody else's around you. And so what is it that you can do? Don't be like everybody else. You be an individual. And when you are, uh, you will reap the benefits of the customer. That's a yeah. guarantee. We use the but salon as the example, as like, some you know that's a company thinking outside the box and they're open and maybe the ones across the street aren't i need a haircut so mm -hmm. bad <laughs> yeah so so old age merchandise i'm like not, re Dan. not really <laughs> i just want to say this one more time old age merchandise is not a good strategy like fine wine. that's that's the 15th time i've heard that today by the way. <laughs> well you know why and and, and because I, if I could take the money that I have in old age merchandise, and if I could get 60% of that money, bring new merchandise in with that 60% of money and turn that merchandise three times in my store, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a financial genius. 
instead of holding it in that back room. And that's what you do. You have to reinvest. And, hey, Monica, and reinvest by spinning that dollar. Monica, unmute your microphone and tell us about your kit and bundle to go. Monica? Oh. Oh. Hold on. Uh, I just oh, there I am. Can you okay. hear me? Yeah, tell us about your, your kit and bundle to go. Well, I'm in scrapbooking, so, and kits, and I've always done kits. That's my thing. And I have a laser. I'm actually, I'm a tower crane operator by trade, so I'm in construction. Wow. So I'm used, yeah, well, hopefully not soon, because I just got called back out of retirement <laughs> due to the COVID. But, um, what I do is I take old products. If you add one or two new products with it, go, oh, look at this. We're featuring stamps from whoever at Emerald Creek, let's say. And you put one or two stamps that are new and you bundle it with other stuff. Okay. Because you can take, just stick the color groups or whatever things that people, because they're still getting the new product and they're getting what you want out of your store. Yep. That's what I do. And that's, I can, yes. you can that's just look at something and yeah, revisit an old project even and hit it up and get it out. That's yeah. I love that. Yeah. And even yeah. I've had, if I get stuck with kits, like I, I've done kits since 2003, I kind of fly under the radar. I know a lot of the social media groups and a couple of people in the States and a few of the paper companies down there and, and I've done things in the past for them and I probably will again, but I find I get stuck with some products because you have to buy when you're buying wholesale, you know, if you need one paper pack, you have to get six, right? So sometimes I'll get stuck, but I literally, those are the only things that I'll save. I will kit it up at the time. I'll put it in a box in my basement. It's nice and dry down there and I'll pull it out and go, look, let's revisit these kits. People you love kits right now. I mean, they love them anyway, Absolutely. but they really love them right now. Um, well, and I, I find if you show people as well, yep. like here, this is what you need to make with this. And they're like, yes, okay, I'm on it. So you, <laughs> so, you said that you're currently entering data for your entire store into Square. So to well, Square. no, I'm actually, I was in Square. I, I've used Square. Okay. Um, I've done the odd shows and I go to do when I'm doing my kits, if I'm traveling to Nova Scotia, I just use square. It's easier that way. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm putting everything on equid. On what? Equid. It's a, it's an e-commerce. Yep. It's an e-commerce site, but it's equid. Uh, I used Weebly. I tried that first and I have nothing good to say. So as my mama would say, don't say anything at all. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Politician. Does, does, That's Equid, right. does Equid also allow you to sell on social media? Yes, it does. Equid, I found, is the, the best go-to because you can do curbside pickup. You can do social media. You can sell on Facebook. You can sell on Google. It has all your SEO suggestions. Bam. It does it all automatic. Plus for me, because I have the brick and mortar store and I use square point of sale, I can literally export all of my items into square and I don't have to re-enter all that again. Boom. Cause I don't want to do that. <laughs> Doing square, that stuff. Does square allow you to sell online? Yes. Uh, they, well, here's the thing. So Square, um, I believe you can sell on Facebook, but I didn't want to mess with that. They have their own e-commerce offering, which is Weebly. Right. W-E-E-B. -E and I tried it and it was a nightmare. And okay, I'm I, fairly. I, I spelled it wrong. It's E-C-W-I-D. Yes. And that's what I use. And I know a lot of people um, that do um, like the country ship paints and the, and the furniture. And I said, just go on Equid up to 99 products. I think it's free. So people that are selling just, just a table or tables or handcrafted things. I, I don't, I get the unlimited just because I have thousands of stuff in my store. And even if I have one, I have 10 of the same 
brand kind of thing, the same out. item. We'll check that yeah, out. Yeah, e Equid I found is the most, and it's very user friendly. Like my daughter, she came on board yesterday and she's going to help me enter a bunch of the data because it's, it's very time consuming building a website, right? Yeah. It's Just so easy. pulling. So easy, you and I can still do it, Rich. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it. About me, but. No, make, make somebody me. said, Kim said big commerce integrates to Square too, but the price on Equid has some nice price points. Yeah, like you, and you have options. You know, it's not super big. Like I, I go to Creativation. Well, actually, this year was the first year I haven't gone in a while, but um, I, I was approached by the people from Rain Retail, and I'm like, that's all fine and dandy, but that's a lot of money for someone to put out. And especially yeah. now, because people are so uncertain, when are we going to open? You know, I don't, I don't qualify for the government stuff in Canada because I didn't have employees last year and I didn't make X amount of dollars last year. Oh, and I used my personal account. And that was the main reason, just silly things, right? I use my personal account for my business and they're like, sorry, you don't have a business account, you don't qualify. So I've been paying my rent <laughs> on my shop. To yeah. George, yeah. George, did you give the uh, uh, retailadventuresblog.com? No, I'm gonna There, there was a guest reading. post um, a few weeks ago, maybe about a month ago, um, we had someone on our podcast, Christine Greco, um, who is a, um, she's a website designer, but she works with a lot of small businesses and getting them up and running and, um, you know, doing it the easy way, <laughs> um, yeah. working with sites that are, that are pretty like Shopify and things like that, that'll get you online and get you started at the very least. Cause right now I think it's more important uh, right. We kept saying be present and be there um, so people can find you. Um, and so there's a really great post that she put up there. Do you guys know about Linktree? So Linktree is, let me go to my blog here. Um, Linktree allows you to You know what, this thing at the top of the page that you can't move around, there you go. Linktree, you go to that, you set up an account and you can use it in Instagram. And instead of putting your link in the bio, you connect it to Linktree. Then when you go, when you say link in bio, I go to the bio, I click on that. And um, you can have like five or six different links. And it doesn't take you out of Instagram, it opens right there on that page. So that's a good way to get tell people about your information too. All right, so her. I think it was the how to sell online. It just passed it. Uh, right there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So there's a, a podcast that goes along with this, but then she also did a whole outline on how to, how to sell online, how to choose a platform, she talked about big commerce yeah. and a few others. Uh, Short-term costs, long-term co costs, choosing a platform. And this is a really interesting podcast too, because she goes into the things that, you know, like everybody when they're, everybody when they're telling you about selling online, all they talk about is SEO and, you know, all these big things that sound so overwhelming if you're not a giant retailer who has 14 people on staff to do that for you. So she walked us through exactly how to do that and then she wrote everything up for this article. So check that out. It's, it's on There's the a lot of information on this on this site. A lot of good information. On retail I mean, adventures I could, blog. He does say so himself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm telling you, it's all free. Go in there and use this stuff. Yeah. That, over how many years now, George? Well, we started this in 2005. Yeah. And we wrote it for, uh, we were at the Memory Trends trade show, and it was at the very beginning when people were just trying, starting to have blogs. And so, you know, how do you put things together? How do you talk to people? Um, and this gave everybody an opportunity to find out information. Here's the information on, 
on uh, the blueprint for success, you click on this and it um, opens up. It's a PDF. You can just download it. And then if this thing is, did you see this thing is driving me crazy? <laughs> and you know, you while you're doing download it, download how to do it. And then if you go a little bit further in the post, they've given us all of these signs well, that we talked about. It's in here somewhere. There, that's the signs. Yeah. There they are. And they're nice. You could take those to a printer and have them put them on any color you want, you know, your store colors. But the thing that's really good about this blog is that we've never monetized it and we don't want to be beholding to any anyone. We just want to give good information out. So it's synthesized through everything that's on there, synthesized through George and I. So we have a blog that's got information for you. We've been doing webinars once a week that cover individual topics on um, how to prepare to open your store and things that you need to do. And those are available on our website, kaiserandbender.com. And at the very top of the page, it says retailing during and after COVID-19. You can just click on that. Of course, we do the podcast with Jason. And we have coaching calls, if you're interested in that. Twice a week coaching calls. Audrey's been doing that with us. Good converse, it's good, good conversation to talk with people who aren't in your store. But that's all our contact information and every place to go to look at all the things that we offer for you. And, and we're happy to answer your questions anytime. Because we've been members of this association. You ready? Yeah. I went to my first HIA show. HIA became CHA, became AFCI 39 years ago when I was seven. See, you are older than me then. I finally, finally found out. Hey, Dad. Wisdom to the, wisdom to the wise, man. That's all. What else can we help you with? Wisdom. I have yeah, one there. quick question. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, um, yeah, because I'm not on the computer, sorry. <laughs> um, my question was, is this going to be, like, am I going to be able to have access to this? Is this being recorded so that I can go and check out the links later? Yes, I am glad you asked that. Uh, we record all of these and post them on the AFCI Canada page on creativeindustries.org. And it's got our phone number in it. So if you ever have a question, all you have to do is dial. And we'll be happy to work with you. No charge. Awesome. I mean, I'm just saying we'll be happy to work with you. And I am a phone call kind of gal. I don't I like, like uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not into texting my daughter. She's into Snapchat and every other, I'm like, just call please. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, that's the 24 hour, seven day uh, phone, by the way. And, and Ooh, I'm going to share real quick. I don't know if I call late. <laughs> I'm going to share real quick. Um, on the, I mentioned it before the savings for members. Um, this is the association's website. Can everybody see it? Yeah. Okay. And this is the, what we do page really easy. We also have this new chat bot, by the way, that if you're ever lost, you can just start interacting with it and it'll pop up and you can ask That's it questions. Cool. And then you might even be able to talk to uh, Pete and I. Um, but if you just go to member discounts, learn more. That's the easy way to get to savings for members. And you can look at the savings dashboard. And uh, once it loads up, the, see the problem is um, we, uh, <laughs> when I, I'm sorry, hold on one second. When we um, are streaming, it slows down the computer significantly. That's why you were having problems, uh, George Ann. But oh. then when you're on this page, this is the savings dashboard for AFCI. Uh, just go to country, Canada. And here's all the Canadian benefits. And Unifirst is the one I was talking about. It says uniform services, like I said, but um, 
the full details of it. Here's all the facility f services and everything. And then all you, all you have to do, if you're interested in it right away, you just go to submit, you fill out your information and a savings uh, expert will call you back. Oh, cool. You're going to talk to a live person for this. You are going to get one-on-one -on -one service. Um, I recorded a webinar um, for the Savings for Members program. I'm sorry, not a webinar, but a, uh, well, we do have a webinar on it, but a, a podcast um, where I spoke with the Savings for Members um, executive and she walked through all of the services, but then also just what makes them so unique is that one-on-one -on -one consultation that you get with them. That's just, it's included in your membership because everybody's business is a little different and then it can identify, you know, just up of which uh, program might you benefit from and some things that you might be doing in your business that you might not necessarily know um, you know, that we offer, for example, like the SO fuel services or the global payments, credit card processing or things like that, that might be beneficial to you, or maybe you don't, uh, or maybe it wouldn't work for your business and that's fine. The whole point of this is to find programs that work for your business and just cut some of those savings off of it so that your membership is basically paid through these savings programs. Um, I just want to interject. Uh, I started going through the members for savings and for all the years I've been in AFCI and all the things I've taken advantage of, the going through this new portal has been amazing. Awesome. It is really helping and it's true. You talk to real people that specialize in each of the benefits. So right now I'm actually in talks with the SO1 because I didn't know about that. And she is, I just have the forms now left to fill out and then I have the SO card to save money. So it was just that simple. And I'm talking to people who really understand where I'm coming from and how to maximize it. And I've had UPS, even though I don't mostly use them, but they've actually called to follow up to make sure I understood how to use my benefits. I, I ended up getting another rate from someone else, but they did the follow up. Um, so there's just, yeah, it, the, this new portal and platform is way better than ever before for our benefits. I'm going to give you one more, Jason. You should pro it might be a good one to add. Um, refund Retriever. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. RefundRetriever.com. So if you ship a lot, they trace the packages for UPS and FedEx. They trace the packages. And if you're late, you get a refund. There's no cost to sign up. There's no contract. I think they keep 50% of the refund and you get the other half. I think that's what the percentage is. I did to 50 but we, know, but we know retailers that are getting considerable checks. So check them out to refund retrieval. If it's, an, if it's an hour late from when it was supposed to well, go. Well, if it's a minute late. So, now, it's a yeah, so we have that through um, Lamprey Systems. Uh, yeah, for Canadians. Cool. All right. So we have that benefit already. See, there's, we have a benefit for everything. Uh, oh, glad call, you brought that up. For Canada? Uh, Lamprey Systems, and you it's, go, you uh, it's already on there uh, for late, late. It tracks uh, late shipments, and you get a 100% credit uh, for that. Ooh, so 100%. You guys are 100%. 100% is better than 50%. And, and, and to do it, you literally have no work to do. They track everything for you, and it, just send it. you a check. Just send you, you a check every month. I just signed up for that one because <laughs> I had it open in the background. <laughs> because you spoke with someone and they're able to walk you through it because that's one I would have never, I mean, we have a lot of, we have several benefits and for some they're worthwhile for some, you know, they could pass on them, but the ones that, that might be worthwhile, that's why we have the savings experts who could talk to you about it and talk to you for as long as you want to keep them on the phone. <laughs> Like and rich. since we launched this, um, we have had over 540 um, inquiries, wow. um, which is over half of the membership. Wow. Oh, it's which is brilliant. awesome! And that's been since January. I'm uh, honestly, I didn't know we had that service, so I'm going to ditch my refund pros because they don't give me 100. percent And I'm switching right now. I've just emailed them out. So thanks for that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So when that podcast comes out, definitely uh, it's a worthwhile listen. We're also doing a blog post uh, that will go out in our next COVID-19 resource net, uh, newsletter, which by the way, we're, we're going to be rebranding from the COVID resource center to the, like, we're getting up and running type uh, newsletter. Cause I think 
if we get one more COVID-19 thing, we're, our heads are going to all collectively pop. So <laughs> don't forget the science, though. Oh, yes, so the crazy. science. Don't forget. Okay. All right. Yeah, we have hijacked, uh, hijacked the podcast past the three o'clock time, Peter. That's okay. Uh, no problem going 20 minutes over. I don't think a lot of us have a ton to do. So, uh, all right. So I'll sign us off. Uh, thank you all again uh, for being with us this afternoon. Uh, as a reminder, today's presentation has been recorded and will be posted on the AFCI Canada page of creativeindustries.org. If you ever need help or have a question or want to get involved, you can always reach uh, AFCI staff by giving us a call, emailing info at creativeindustries.org, or by utilizing the new chat features on our website. So Kaiser, Bender, and Baum, thank you for being our uh, hosts today and for sharing your knowledge. And okay. to all of our uh, members, uh, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for inviting us. Bye. Take care. Bye. -bye.